So Laurie Hamill gave me a lofty topic, how the local food movement can dismantle racism. That's a tall order. Um, so I, 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 um, I'll touch on a few things from my experience and from who I've leaned on um, to get some, who have, I, who have leaned on to, to get some expertise um, for this subject. Um, in my lifetime, you know, this is the most profound moment um, for me. It's the most important time in my life and, and I believe in our lives as well. We're experiencing a lot of pain, death, economic blight and doom. The pandemic has exposed us to the inequities of our healthcare systems, extreme vulnerability for our small business own uh, black and brown indigenous and uh, people of color businesses. Our social support systems are exposed to, to show how broken and inequitable and unfair the system is. And on top of that, there's a racial uprise and reckoning. Yet, where is the hope in all of this? As Peter said, we're agents of our experience. We have to stay in this moment and this meant we have to say something and we have to do something. So when I look at dismantling, dismantling means disassemble, pull apart, take apart, um, but it doesn't mean destroy. As my colleague Egg Duggar calls this time and period in our lives, the third reconstruction period. The pandemic has allowed Americans and the world to take a pause in order to survive. So, Let's take a view from my perspective, a passionate gardener. Um, let's take an onion. I love onions. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm just thrilled about onions. Onions also, by the way, um, helps your immune system. But as we cut into a, an onion or I cut into an onion, it may look nice and shiny coat outside. Um, and sometimes, you know, when we cut into the onion and take a pause, um, the layers may reveal some truths that we may have ignored, um, locked up into our minds or just we never realize what's going on. We start to peel it back. Sometimes the onion has a really bad stench. Now, people's first instinct might be, that's a bad onion, let's throw that away. When we start to peel and go further, there are some assets there. Um, onion may not be perfect, but there are things that we can salvage. And if we keep peeling and get down to the core, you know, we could see that the root might still be there. The onion is not necessarily all bad. And the beauty of it is that root end can be planted. And with the right soil, nourishment, care, and love, it can be regenerated into something strong, pungent, delicious, nutritious. And I know because I've been doing it all summer, uh, locked in in my home, basically. So how can we dismantle racism with local food? Well, it starts with ourselves. We need to view things from a new lens, a lens of equity. It has to be intentional. And I know it's not easy. As a Jamaican American, I don't have the same lived experience as my African-American partner and friends. We have to recognize that. And, and I have to stop myself in, in, in making sure I remind myself of that on a regular basis. We have to value every part of the onion, the cebolla, the unio, the, ce the cebola, the yang song, the basil. That's the same onion. So, we need to start from a place of truth. Tell the truth. See what it's in front of us. We need to retell our history, such as what happened with Black Wall Street. We need to take ownership of our land, our own, own our credit, own our money, own our in investment, own our destiny, invest locally in Black and Brown communities. Language is also very important. We need to change, and I challenge every one of you to be part of this conversation. 
in changing narratives. For example, in the local food world, you know, the fishermen, when, I, when we have at first talked about um, how do we address diversifying people trying to eat different fish, the language was underloved fish. So when I looked at the list of the underloved fish that people were talking about, like mackerel and whiting and um, redfish and porgy, I love all that fish. My community that I grew up with, my Caribbean friends, my African American community love that fish. So let's not call it under love. I mean, that little, little thing of really acknowledging and valuing, like who decides what's love? You or me? So another thing that my colleague Karen Spiller and I always tackle is language in the food world of culturally relevant culturally appropriate. All food is relevant. All food is appropriate. We're not valuing what is true. So let's start by even just changing the way we look at what's under love and love it, what's culturally relevant and call it culturally connected because it's appropriate. So even within our food systems, we are perpetuating things that are not valuing um, our community. We have to be brave um, and we can't do this together uh, alone. We have to do it together. We need allies. We need white allies and we have to do things differently. I'm hoping in the breakout session, we could talk about farming and common good, looking at farming um, in a different way, like um, Cornelius Blandin has. He, he believes that farming is a civil service that should be treated like a civil service. Um, so, Derek, how much more time do I have? We're good on time. Um, take another minute or two if you need it. Okay. So, um, I want to leave with a story, another metaphor from Cornelius um, Blandy. And he said that we're always fighting from behind. Having a conversation uh, about fair prices can happen once we get to level the playing field to the baseline. Only then can we talk about fair prices and fair, about prices and fair prices. That's a much needed conversation. But until we start by maintaining the land base first and then credit and debt, until then talking about fair prices is almost like a luxury. And that is the shame in all of us. This gets to the way of even how we collaborate. It's like you bring in a football team together and you wanna talk about the plays we have, but some of the players don't even have the proper gear to be out there. They don't even have the helmet on. They're worried about how to play the game safely before they can worry about the right way of running a play. And that prevents you from operating as a team because you have so many players out there at different levels. And until you get all those players on the team at the same level, it's hard for the team to operate effectively as a team. All of that is to say that we can't just show up in coalitions the way we need to at the times because we're dealing with some things that are so fundamental that get taken for granted. So there's hope folks, we can dismantle we can rebuild one onion at a time.